Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2020 video. Just a quick heads up for the lack of videos in the last week. Uh, I've still got ongoing building work in the house, which means that the power main that the shed runs off has been disconnected and still is disconnected until everything's signed off. Um, so they're going to be intermittent bursts of videos. Hopefully I should have everything done by the end of this week. Um, but just bear with us. Just bear with us. Right, boring bit out of the way. How are we all? Nice to see us. Um, right. Scenario. What we'll are we doing, Alan? Let's get back into this. The first video after a break for a little while was always a bit weird. Good afternoon, driver. You have taken over the driving duties as Grand Central Service here at York. You are tasked at driving this service as far as Hartlepool. You'll call it Thurst, North Allerton, Eagles Cliff and Hartlepool. Open the doors and allow passengers to board here at York. And set the train up for a 1321 departure. Remember to turn ETS in the rear power car before departure. That's fine. I think I can just about manage that. He says... He says. Uh, I'll rear cab. Oh, cable's right in the way um, of my AWS button, which I've just thought is going to be a big, big issue. Let's get our doors open. Don't have DRA, so I can turn that off. Ain't she a beauty? Something about the Grand Central livery, and especially with the buffered HSTs that I just love. Absolutely love. And this one, this one's actually got the, the skirt underneath. It's not just the one that's flat. There's a couple of varieties of uh, buffered HSTs. A lot of people don't like this one that has like the half skirt. I do, but it's one of those things. And the livery of, of Grand Central, not not massive on their logo. It looks a bit Microsoft Publishery for me from the nineties. Those of you that grew up in the nineties using things like Microsoft Publisher and uh, that sort of jazz for logos and things. That's kind of what it looks like. But I like the rest of it. I like the orange as well on the one eighties. Right, let's us got to the road. We have power as well. It's got a clag factor right up. It's a noise that very rarely gets old for me. HSTs in general, I mean, a lot of people think that they've, like, disappeared from the lines. And whilst they're reduced in numbers, they're, they're not gone. They're not gone. I mean, Scotland have got a ton of them. Um, GWR, I think, are even looking... Were they looking for another set or have recently got another set or something? Or another couple of sets. So they're still out there. You're just not on the East Coast Main Line as much. As much at all. And that is sad. I miss that. But progress is progress. Even if it does seem a bit backward sometimes. From a passenger's point of view, that is. If you think about the... I'm not going to have the IET argument on here. But if you think about the IET argument, they've got a homogenised fleet with the maintenance contract tied in, they're going to be a lot cheaper to maintain, they're a lot cheaper to operate, blah, 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 blah. But from an enthusiast's point of view, it's quite different. Um, and even from a, from my point of view as a passenger, uh, I find the, the IETs quite uncomfortable. Um, but then there's a couple of people that don't, and so they're lovely and they love everything about them. So swings and roundabouts for us enthusiasts, isn't it? Neither one of us is wrong. I've just noticed I have my Twitch overlay on, and I shouldn't. I should have my YouTube one on. Uh, 
Where's that then? There. <laughs> Sorted. Sorted. And I can have... Control. No, I can't have controller cam. That's not set up. For some weird reason. We'll stick with the Twitch one. Because it's got controller cam on and we're not looking at a new route. Still work in progress going through all the different settings and everything, making sure that the new my new version of OBS is exactly how it should be. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. The streams, the Twitch streams have had a, a, a big overhaul. There's new sounds, new GIFs, that sort of thing. It looks a little bit more appropriate for the viewer numbers we're getting. I mean, we're averaging well over a uh, hundred viewers. I think my average viewer count is something like 160 something at the minute. Um, no, it took a little dip towards the end of last week. It's about 140 something at the moment, which is quite nice. And that's an average viewers. We had up to 200 and... I want to say 240 something. It's my last high stream. So the Twitch streams are going really well. Uh, if you don't come over and watch the Twitch streams, I, I really suggest if you want a more adult pub themed environment to talk about trains, by all means come and join us. It's not recommended if you don't like swearing and, and talk of things of an adult nature, I don't recommend it. Uh, but if you if you do and you like trains, it's like going to the pub and talking about it. It's so well worth popping over to Twitch. Uh, it's usually Sunday and Wednesday from 7pm. Uh, at the moment with us being in lockdown and the general state of how the country is at the moment with things going on and people's works being closed and all sorts of open or working from home I am able to stream a little bit more so there's like usually I'm on about three to four streams a week at the minute so it's worth heading over to the Facebook group and that's your best place to find out when I'm next streaming or just go over to Twitch Alan Thompson Sim click the follow button and you'll get a notification when I do go live it's probably the better way So yeah, this scenario, this is 1 November 9-2, King's Ross Sunderland, so this is using DPS's North East England. Um, it's available over on alanthompsonsim.com now. It is by... Mark Aviation. I knew it was someone I hadn't really heard of before, uh, but I've had this scenario suggested to me. So I was like, oh, I'm going to give it a go. And I don't really need to be given an excuse to, to thrash an HST up and down the East Coast mainline. Especially one as beautiful as this. <laughs> so with controller back cam back on, I, will, I know I'll get some questions. Um, power brake controller that I'm using here at the moment, this is not available yet. Um, we're hoping to have it out before Christmas. Bear with us on that one. If you want any more information on it, head over to alanthompsonsim.com. Uh, go to the hardware section and it will tell you about what's coming up with these. Um, available ready is the AWS plunger and the door control panel. They are both out already. And I think available actually. There's a couple available of the uh, DRA version of the door control panel at the moment. Love this section of this room. It's a simple little bit in it. Simple little bit, but really cool to have in there. Oh, loving the AI on this as well now. Oh, 
Should try to get a screenshot from there, really. This is another little bit of this route that I really enjoy. I might actually try for a screenshot from here. Um, just the detail that's in the little bits and pieces uh, lying around the yard and stuff and the, the posts all lying up against things and that sort of thing just really, really, really makes this uh, little side and section for me. Let me try and see if I can get a decent enough shot. We'll see if we like that one later on. But yeah, this route, this route's been out quite a while now. Um, I haven't checked Darren's blog, actually, DPO, Darren, the guy that does this route. I haven't checked his blog for a while. I don't know if, what section he's working on next or, or that sort of thing. But I'm looking forward to getting up to Newcastle. Oh, yeah. Vomitor. Really liking the year. This this must be set sort of about. To say what year this set? Two thousand ten ish. Because that was a journey Yard with National Express. Brandon, so yeah, two thousand nine. To be fair, what a flash in the pan franchise that was. Crazy, crazy work, that one. It's a bit of a bit of an ode to open access operators who I know are really struggling at the minute with the, the lockdown situations. Between um, Hull trains, I think have stopped all services. I think Grand Central will have as well. And I mean, we won't even get into the the, the non-start launch of the uh, Blackpool runs. As an, again, as an enthusiast of the railways, um, and also just someone that likes to see new services. Um, it's, it's quite gutting that that's not happening. Mark IV rake, I think, was... I think they've got a couple of them actually fully refurb by now, or I knew they were part, part way through refurb. And the 90s are all done. I think one of the, they're going back to DB Red, I think. Which, to be honest, I'm not against. I just really like them in Grand Central. <laughs> At least we have them in Train Sim. Somebody the other day was saying Train Simulators, it's more than just a Train Simulator game, it's quite a historic thing. Because you're able to do things that you can't do anymore or see things that aren't around anymore. And I, I completely agree. It's preserving things as they were, but just in a virtual form. I, I tend to agree. I really like it looking at it that way probably makes it sound a little bit more important than it probably is <laughs> but it's this true it's true just as much when people make high fidelity model railway recreations of of uh, it, bits from the past i mean how many gwr branch line layouts are there because of course that doesn't exist anymore We're getting to drive a buffered HST down the East Coast Main Line. Love it. Love it. A 
And for those of you that don't know, because I'm sure somebody will ask in the comments, why did some HSTs to Class 43s end up with buffers on the front of them? Um, well, in the build of the Class 91s, the 91s were ready before the Mark IVs and DBTs. Um, so they wanted something to do their... Part of the 91s acceptance was to do so many miles actually on the main line running in service without failures. So what they did is they did a rake of Mark III's and then converted a DVT, uh, converted a HST into a DVT. So DVT stands for driving van trailer. So basically what it meant that they didn't have to turn around the locomotives at, at either end of the run. Originally, all they had the engine running for was to supply the um, the train heating, basically, the auxiliaries. Um, but what they found was that there was oil building up in the exhaust, and then causing or diesel building up in the exhaust, and then it was causing fires. Uh, so what they then did was made it so that the the HSTs and the 91s were powering, and then you had like 9,000 horsepower or something ridiculous uh, bobbing up and down the East Coast Main Line. <laughs> that little box up here, just on the on the on the dash here, with uh, the TDM Time Division Multiplex in, in, info in it. We're not going to be at 40 by the time we hit those points. Bad driving, Al. Bad driving. Anyway, you don't come here for the driving. We know it's awful. It's rare that I stop at Thirsk on the East Coast Mainline at all. Ever. I suppose you just pull up to the end of this platform, I suppose. Oh, six car, five car, six car sets. I can't remember. One, two, three, four, five. God, yeah. Probably even further to the end. I suppose if I'd pulled up a bit further. Because I think these had SDO, did they? So it must fit in real life. seem to be doing quite well time wise so uh, use a bit of old uh, async keys just to speed up time here there's obviously just a bit of leeway in the timetable with this one It's going to make my life a lot easier. There we go. It might make me slightly too loud, so I'm going to be a bit careful. I'll try not to shout.
got North Allerton next. So my phone going crazy. Yeah, 58, 60, 64 notifications. Go away. I'm videoing. So yeah, they were used as DVTs. That's why they had buffers on the end. It means they're going to be pulled about, swapped about, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then when the Mark IV DVTs came online, they were just put back into service, mo mostly on the cross-country style routes. Uh, and then they did end up with Virgin XC, didn't they? Uh, and then... They went off lease, I think, after Virgin XC, and then it wasn't until Grand Central took them on. One end, one set ended up on the NMT as well, didn't it? I'm not someone that knows individual numbers of trains, so it could have been 43042 or something. I don't know that, um, but I just know what what what's what have used um, buffered ones. A vague recollection of first great well great western having one as well but i'm probably making that up i know virgin cross country definitely had them and grand central definitely had them And I'm not sure if they still have the TDM stuff in them, just isolated or what. I'm not sure. I'm sure it might physically be there. But whether it works or has been tested or maintained for the last 20 years, I don't know. I think it was HSTs were a bit funny, weren't they? Because Mark Threes, I think there's a 400 volt jumper connection between the coaches. I, I, I might get this wrong, but we'll give it a go. There's 400 volt connection between them, um, and that's why you get Mark Three A and B. So you get the local hold ones have different voltage lighting circuits and power circuits and stuff inside them. So that's why HST trailer cars need to be converted for local hold stock, or local hold stock ones need to be converted for HST haulage. Coming into North Allerton. Station alike on the East Coast Mainline. It's one of those platforms, it's the only platform I've ever been told off for. I'll tell you that now. And I'm no spotter, I don't stand on the edge of platforms very often. Don't care if you do, I mean, it's up to you. Um, but I was, saw a, a, a Voyager coming down, coming southbound, and I thought, that'd make a really cool video for a beginning of a video or something. That would, let me get that. And I was miles away from the yellow line, and I mean a good 
a couple of foot behind it. And the driver was going ape as he came past me. And then I was thinking about, it's like the, that poor bloke that's driving that train, right? Is pumping through there at 100 odd mile an hour. And there's me standing with my phone. Probably still not quite, even though I, I was in my head far enough back. Probably for a driver that's coming through, that could be somebody that would be about to step over or step into. Oh, it was quite harrowing after. It was a bit like, oh, I didn't mean to annoy him. That was quite bad. But yeah, I do like it because trains come through incredibly fast. Seven. Yeah, we're a little bit later than we should have been there. Not a very good view from there for us, is there? It's strange that you can see through the windows, they're just tinted. exactly going to get a mad pull away from here I mean let's be honest but Still got to pull away notch five. Like every good HST driver. I never sort of, I, I still in my head can't get my head around this section of this room. <laughs> the room. Still we need to look at a map, I kind of go, w w where? Do you guys ever get that, that there's like bits of route that you still, no matter how many times you drive it, you never really remember it? I do it all the time, I've got a really good sense of direction most of the time. Cliff and then Harley Bull. That was it. It's 
got many journeys out there actually that, that sort of, not many scenarios out there that make use of the sort of East Coast Mainline bit plus this bit going this way. There's quite a few coming the other way. Like southbound runs, but not northbound. What I really mean by that is there's a few, but not enough for my liking. Oh, it's 40. I'm sitting there looking at that 40 limit going, mm, why am I doing 58? I've got to be a lot more on the ball on this section as well. T40, 60, 55, 50. Plenty of horn action for those that like the tones. actually get up to do this bit of the route at some point in real life. I've never come down this section of it. Not that I can remember. I might have done. <clears throat> it's weird because I had a section in my life when I was younger where trains were my biggest interest and, and aircrafts were. Uh, especially in sort of my early to late teens. And that was the time I probably did the most, not, not the most traveling, but did an awful lot of traveling around the UK for various different projects and things. Different festivals, youth parliament stuff, all, all sorts of weird, wonderful things. Um, so sometimes I go, ah, oh, I've never been there. And then somebody go, what are you on about, mate? We were there 1999. We were there in 2001. And I'll go, oh, right, yeah. Like places I've just completely forgotten that I've ever been to. And most of that time we went by train. So it's like I can remember journeys when I was like five. <laughs> it also doesn't help there's lots of other things going on when I was younger as well uh, that, that probably would affect my short term memory. Um, so it may not have quite stuck. It was actually quite recently that we were, me and, me and a couple of friends were talking, we were at my mate's house. <clears throat> we're talking about Manchester. And I swore blind that from a few of the conferences we did in Manchester, we only went by train once. And that was from Houston. And I was like, ah, it must have been. It's the only thing, way I can think of it. And my mate was like, oh, I've, got, I've actually got a photo of us on the train 
for that in the, in the box that me and the missus were going through last Christmas. What, let me go and get it. He pulled it down. It wasn't. I don't know where, how we got there. I was on a 156, an unrefurbished 156. So they pulled out this photo saying, that's not something we got out of Houston. That's 156. So how, what route did we take? I don't know. So I still don't know. I still don't know. I mean, we could have come out of Houston and swapped or changed. I don't know. But it was just weird. Oh, another set there. All I really remember out a lot of the Manchester trips was trams. I remember loving going on the trams. would usually have already had a few cans of beer on the journey wherever we were going, so. Not surprising that I might not fully remember the, the journeys. And then of course I look back at it now and I think how wasted that was. All the things that I could have seen, all the things that you could have paid more attention to that are now withdrawn or disappeared. Yeah. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And that's why Train Sim, for me, lets me revisit a little bit of history. It lets me revisit those times. It's weird, because if I was ever going on a long journey, like up to Scotland or whatever, um, I'd always, 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 even though I was way, way more into planes, so that you had to keep trains on the down low because it wasn't very cool, I would always buy a copy of Rail to have a read on the train. So I it kind of kept up with things that were kind of going on, like maybe twice a year. <laughs> but realistically, with stock coming in and that sort of thing, that's not that's not the worst way to be. I remember one of the copies of Rail that I remember getting, it must be about 10 or 11, was the first 68, say, first 66 coming over. Um, I remember buying a Rail magazine to find out what the 180 was and anything about it that I could. I'm trying to think of other quite poignant things. first bit of the channel tunnel, rail link. Yeah, there's lots of little things like that that I still remember from just little glimpses of my lost years that I could have spent looking at trains. Not necessarily looking at them, being on them more than anything. Listening to them. Seeing what the ride was like, seeing what the seats were like. I mean, the Mallard refurb for the 91s, I remember the old seats, and I'm not going to be sentimental about them. People moan about the IET seats, the original uh, standard class in City 225 seats were awful. Awful. But first class was glorious. I mean, I remember even as a kid having to get up on my knees because my bum had gotten numb. And I used to sort of never get why my mum always wanted to wait, like always was happier when it was an in-city 125, so when it was a 43, uh, over, over like a 91 set. And that's because the seats were better. <laughs> And in those, my mum was a smoker, and in those days, 
you didn't have to go all the way down to the smoking carriage to, to smoke. You could just go into the vestibules and smoke. Even though it's officially not allowed. And that happened right the way up till the smoking ban um, on HSTs. I even remember it happening in the East Coast days during the Highland Chieftain. People still smoking in the vestibules. Fag out the window. Of course, me being very good and respecting rules and laws and everything like that would never have done such a thing. Bit of wobbly track there. All right, Eagles Cliff. Still a fair whack to uh, Hartlepool as well, wouldn't it? 16 miles. I always forget how sort of long this section takes, and that is a pretty good shot, isn't it? I will say it's a bit like this in this route where the lack of distant scenery does slightly impact it. Because even if you're in the cab and you looked out, you can't really see. But on the whole, it really doesn't bother me. I don't know why I slowed down so much so far away. How can my ETA be 10440 when it's already 0517? Ominously just appeared there. Oh, it's the station loading in. I was like, what is that? Like a signal hanging down or something. Oh, I remember Eaglescliff Station now. It's the central one. You can come in from that side as well, can't you? Or that side. Am I remembering that right? Doesn't look like it. See what I mean? Oh no, I was right. Was I? That doesn't look very used. Oh no, I was right. Place with a giant sign. lack of stop boards on this route or am I just not seeing them no maybe I might just need to update them because I don't remember it not having stop boards I'm sure it did I 
Right, so it's Eaglescliff and then Hartlepool is 14 miles away. So about 20 more minutes. It's a longer video than I thought it was going to be as well. Which is uh, quite cool actually. Haven't done a video, haven't done a video over an hour for a while, I don't think so. But I thought a route like this with a scenario like this deserves it. I've got loads more to get done today as well, so. Be a cool place to have an allotment, that wouldn't it? Get quite a lot of freight up and down here as well. Thirty limit then a fifty. Junction signal box on the right hand side if I remember rightly. Might be wrong. Ninety percent says I'm wrong. Ninety percent of me says I'm wrong. Talking of some freight, what we got up ahead? EWS 60. And this is, is this is, I don't have to scrap scenario from here at some point, I'm sure. Yep, no, see, I was completely wrong. It's a different station altogether. What is this station? Station that thousands of you are going to put in the comments. It's this station! I live here! Thank you, though. I appreciate it.
Stockton. There we go. TJ Thompson Scrapyard. Yeah, see, I knew it. Knew it was scrap. One thing I remembered. There's a big yard not far from here either, isn't there? That's say that up here. Yeah, T yard. I think I was ahead of myself, so that junction I think I've just seen on the map there. On the big curve. As an actual driver, it's probably nice doing these runs because you get your nice bit of your East Coast mainline thrash, plus your bit of sort of localish driving like this. And I think that's why I like it in Train Sim as well. Sort of mix of two worlds, best of both. Cloud over there looks like some. Ah, oh, do you want a funny story about skywriting? Sorry, random jump there. This is the the place I thought it was signal box on the wrong side. I was looking at that sky there, and I was like, it looks like it's in sign writing. Right, so I live very close to Cambridge Airport, and there is a X three hundred. Uh, those are based there. For those that don't know, it is an aerobatics aircraft. Uh, you can pay and go and have a flight in it and all sorts. But the, there's there's a few. I think there's two or three there. And the guy quite often will be out and about a flight and he'll put something up in the sky over Cambridge. He does it quite regularly. It can be silly little things, it can be funny things, everything like that. But <laughs> the other day, right? Let's say the other day. It was the day that Sean Connery died. And I was on the, the local one of the local village groups on Facebook, which, you know, you're going to have to be when you're an adult. You know, you might know that somebody's lost a glove on a gate at the nature reserve or somebody's left a dog poo bag, uh, like, near the dog poo bin and not in it. So it's these vital things you need to know as an adult. That's why you join these local groups. But anyway, there's a woman on there that drives me nuts. Right? People would call her a bit of a Karen. She is one of the, there's a dog poo bag in the wrong place, people. So she puts on, puts a picture up. My husband's just pointed this out to me. The pilot that puts the stuff up in the sky, the sky, the sky writer, has put love in the air. Right, he's written love. Now, I happened to be walking my dog a little bit earlier and heard the plane about. I didn't see this, but I'd literally not been in the house two minutes. So I decided to go and have a look what he'd been doing, because I could hear him buzzing about. And before I'd even had a chance, there was like a billion people. And this woman was going, it's so nice that somebody's got the passion to go out there and show love for the community and all of this and all of that. And this is the woman that drives me bonkers, the moans about everything and everything like that. Do you know what it actually said? 007. Win. What's that? Wah! 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 So two things you can learn from that. Don't join local groups. Don't, just don't join them. You find people on there that take over your life on the internet and you have to literally, I'm quite good at this, but there are certain people that just make me go, mm. So yeah, just one of them. A Karen, as she might be called these days. 
but it did. It made me very, I was very, very pleased. And so were a lot of other people on the group as well. Because she was adamant it said love. It was us not wanting to embrace it. No, it wasn't. It said 007. Anyway, completely, completely digressed there. Just, just a funny story that came to mind. God, we're going to be able to do 70 in a minute. How long for? Take your bets, please. Actually, we should be able to, hopefully, for a little while. We're seven miles into Hartlepool. And I think, don't we come into Hartlepool on a bend and it's, it slows right down there, I think, doesn't it? Power station over there. Isn't the Eagles Cliff power station? I'm not sure if that is that one because this part of the country there are quite a few dotted about, aren't there? Pontefract and all that, like the Yorkshire coalfields, really, isn't it? Where is this? Billingham. So maybe it is around that area. Stop moaning at me for 1.5 mile an hour. I've got 70 for a while. Nice. Actually, we wouldn't be in Yorkshire. What are we on about? We must be out of Yorkshire now. Where's Billingham? Let's find out what County Billingham's in. Educate myself at the same time. Let's have a look. Charlton Town, Civil Parish, River Tees, County Durham. That would make sense if I actually thought about it. I need to look up where it crosses in, where it does cross the county border into Durham. the pacer somebody did a I saw it on somebody put a meme up on Facebook the other, today actually about pacers don't leave them out in the cold homeless at Christmas pacers was it something like pacers for life not just for Christmas or something <laughs>
enjoyable run this, decent AI, I've, I've really liked it. Again, shows off like some of the best bits of this route as well. Gives you that lengthier drive, bit of mainline running, bit of slower line running. Medium amount of stops, you're not stopping every station, so it's, it's not too sort of start stoppy tedious, but it's also not too A to B tedious. I like it. I'm going to definitely do this on stream. It's good length as well. What's it going to be? Probably hour and five, hour and ten. I always thought the approach was worse than this. I somehow remember coming into Hartlepool at some great speed and having to really slow down loads. But I'm guessing it's probably I've been caught out by that 20 once, maybe, in a scenario, and I've just got it in my head that it's not a good approach. Is this place that somebody said that was a prison or something on the right hand side? Big old prison. Two minutes late. We're playing that on that extra extra long stop at uh, Thursk. To be fair, in real life, that probably waits for pathing to be available at North Allerton or something, doesn't it? So you can cross over. do work we've stopped at least full service into neutral doors are open all right and guys thank you very much for joining me and uh dealing with me waffling on a few times in that video as well first one i've done in a while so just get back into the swing of it please feel free to like share and subscribe head over to alantobsonsim.com for your latest and greatest train sim needs head over to twitch on a sunday and wednesday from 9 p.m and also head over to the facebook group for uh to keep up to date with everything else that's going on real simulation uh, real or simulation once again guys thanks ever so much i'll catch you next time